Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. This is just a picture of our private dining room. And in fact, the pieces of artwork were actually illustrated by our residents at a paint bar, which was fun. So the private dining room has many different concepts. You can, have a, you can have a program there, maybe a bingo program, if you will, an art program. You can host exercise if you move the tables out of the way. But private dining room is also important because with this disease process, our residents are going to forget how to eat, what to exactly use. Do I use the fork? Do I use the spoon? And how do I take that fork and bring it to my mouth? So what we do is we meal model. So we'll sit with our resident in conversation and have it just like, just like home, and we'll eat with our residents. If our resident sees, us, sees myself, say, dining, they're going to take what I'm doing as a cue, and they're going to have a successful dining experience. So this private dining room has many different ways that we can finagle a program, but it's very important to have. It's a little bit quieter, takes away the distractions, and it's very important to us and to our residents here. Our beautiful kitchen, and I, it says memory making baking. That's very important. That's one of our big programs through the whole entire company. Memory making baking. So everyone has a recipe that you probably always made when you were younger, maybe with your mother. I know mine was an Oreo mousse I made with my grandmother. But what you're going to do is you're going to make, the, say, those chocolate chip cookies that are delicious. You're going to have the ingredients out on the counter so our residents can chomp on the ingredients as they're making the cookies. But what else am I going to do? I'm also going to have the cookies in the oven so they can smell the cookies. We need to stimulate the senses. Our residents need to smell those delicious chocolate chip cookies. It brings them back to a time maybe they're making them with their mother or maybe with their dad or their sibling. And it brings back those memories, those good memories. And this is their home now. This is where they live, so why not bring those wonderful memories back to them and now a place that they can call home? Okay, it's not the best picture, everyone. I know it's of a toilet, but it's for a reason. So let's take the resident bathroom here. Does anyone see any difference with this bathroom, maybe from your bathrooms at home? Anything that stands out? Good, excellent. I wish I had prizes or something. I'd throw it on over. Yes, you're absolutely right. The color of the toilet seat. Does anyone know why? It gives them a cue that that's where they should. Exactly. It's just that extra, it's just that extra cue for them to see that that is a toilet. It's so important because the, of the color contrast. Now, it's not very loud. The backsplash is also that pretty blue color. But it just, it helps our residents. What we are about is we want to make those connections for our residents so they don't have to do that. And I don't say that to be rude. It's just because we, we want them to succeed. If a resident is in a position where they, they cannot make that connection, you can see them struggling. You can see our residents not understanding a situation, not understanding the queuing. Maybe if they went to this restroom and it wasn't, two different colors, they wouldn't be successful. It's these little things that we have to think about to make those connections for our residents. If we do that, they won't feel that as anxious as they would have if they were in a situation where they weren't understanding. We are with residents that are early to middle stage. What that means, it's a really difficult stage. Those stages are the stages where our residents know that they are forgetting. They know that something's not right with me. They know that this isn't the home that I might have grown up in. Or where are, my, where are my sons? Where are my daughters? Why am I here? Unfortunately, these are the stages for our residents that really, they do know that something is going on. Why? Why am I here? So what we have to do is we have to make those connections for our residents and we have to show in our care. We really have to show that this can be home for them. So when I say home, like I said, doing the laundry, taking your dog out. In fact, speaking of dogs, I bring in my own dog every day. 
She her, <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. I should have brought all of. Um, she's a sweetheart, but I bring her every day. Why? Because we grow up with dogs. We have cats. We have some cats in the building actually that our residents have. But it's important. That's normal life. Taking the dog out for a walk, feeding the dog, you know, even bringing it out for to go to the bathroom, that's normal life. And our residents can do that. That's what I need to drive home with everyone. I need this to feel like home and I need our community to know that this can be an extension of home for your loved one, for your friend, for whomever. This is success. Take the second picture over here, the queuing signage. Now, I'm not a big fan of a sign of a toilet, but it works. If you have those restrooms, even at home, if you're, you are caring for a loved one, put a sign on that bathroom door because it just cues our residents that that is a bathroom. It sounds little, it sounds small, but it is very important. You can do that with other spaces in your homes or here in the Vita neighborhood. If there is a need, if a resident cannot find something, this simple little sign of a toilet can work wonders. This is our brain gym. Now, we want to create a space where our residents are continuing, continuing to use their abilities that they still have. It's habilitation therapy. We're not looking to rehabilitate. Our abilities can't be retaught to our residents. However, the abilities that our residents still have, if we continue to exercise those abilities, they won't lose them as quick. If they're not talking, if they're not socializing, if they're not going to listening their, to their favorite music, or doing their laundry, or doing the things that are important that they still have the ability to do, then they're going to lose it. It's just how the saying goes. If you don't use it, you lose it. So just take, for instance, the Brain Gym. It's a touchscreen monitor, which is user-friendly. And because of our staffing on Avita, we have staff that can sit right there with the resident and use that as an education tool, or just to connect with family at home through the Skype or I think Apple does a program. I talked to my mom through it, so I, I know. But um, it's really successful. It's just that little extra connection for our residents to, to continue to work their minds. Secure and safe patio. This is a wonderful thing. I haven't always been so lucky to work in a community where we've had this, so this is a safe and secure space for our residents. So our residents can come and go as they please to the outdoors without a staff member being right there next to them. And I don't say that to be rude, but let's be honest, we all enjoy our own time. We all enjoy our own space. Maybe we want to listen to music on our own, just, just maybe just meditate or just sit in peace and quiet. So our residents can utilize this space on their own. Um, it's beautiful. They can see all the seasons. They can go out if it rains. These doors are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you might be a little nervous when you hear that because snow happens and rain and thunderstorms. Well, that's real life and our residents should be able to experience that. But what's great with this neighborhood is that we do our hourly checks. Our aides and myself, we, we check on our residents to make sure that they, everything is all right, everyone is accounted for and everyone's safe. But this is a space that is really important to our residents here. And it ends with this is our home. This, this is actually one of our residents and one of our aides. This is what we want to create here. I, didn't make, I did not make them do that. That's, that was on their own. And me, with my camera phone, I snapped a picture because I was walking behind them. When you see something like this, you've know, you know you've made a success. You know a program is working when this happens on its own between staff and resident. This is family. So that's just a little bit, a little bit about what the VITA program is about and what memory care in an assisted living really should be. Whether it's here or somewhere else, memory care in an assisted living needs to be an extension of home. And if we could be your home, well, then great. <laughs> Thank you. So that's why I wanted Jazz to be part of the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I am very nervous, so, though. So, so one of the things that I've really come to appreciate, once from doing this stuff for a long time, I've been doing this kind of work now for about 20 years. I always thought of, so Alzheimer's, you think of Alzheimer's, there are a set of symptoms of Alzheimer's, and they are, you forget stuff, right? And as a result of forgetting stuff, you, you can't follow directions well, because you forget direction three, you know, by the time you get to it. 
And when things are severe, that means brushing your teeth is, gets complicated because there were like five steps to brushing your teeth and it's really hard. So there's all that. And then there are these other th symptoms. There's aggression and there's apathy and there's anger and there's depression and all these other things. I have come to appreciate over time that all of those are just ancillary. There are primary things that happen when you get dementia that are cognitive. And all the other stuff, or most of it, is really a reaction to that. So the real question is, can you, knowing that you're, you're going to experience those cognitive things, at the same time not end up with these other things, the depression and the anger and all of these things? I think, in essence, that's what Jazz is talking about. And really, it's what Christine is talking about and, the, and the, the programs to try to train caregivers for folks who are at home. Is to, you know, I don't really care when I get older if I get dementia and I can't do the Times Crossword Puzzle. I could never do the Times Crossword Puzzle. The question is, am I going to be happy? Am I going to be happy? That's one of the things that assisted living may be able to provide. The question is, can you afford it? Because the re initial reaction is, this is just way too much money. So I'm just going to talk about this for a little bit. Now, the goal, once again, is not to have you remember all the numbers, but to remember the basic goal, do the math. Before you reject this as an alternative, if you think that it works for other reasons, do some math. So Frank and Mary, they've got total assets of $950,000, including about $350,000 in cash, and about $600,000 worth of house. Um, the, um, Frank and Mary together have $3,000 worth of income, and they're thinking about moving to an assisted living facility. Let's say the assisted living facility is $6,000 a month. A lot of money, a lot of money. First remember though, First remember that if Frank and Mary are moving to the assisted living facility, a lot of their other expenses are going away. They're not cooking anymore, maybe a little bit, but not very much, right? They may still be driving, but not as much because there are, because there are, there are vehicles here that will take them on trips, they want to be socializing. There are a whole bunch of bills go away. So assume here that the assisted living facility is costing $6,000 a month or $72,000 a year and that everything else that, that Frank and Mary are now spending is $12,000 a month. So they've got to find $84,000. Remember, they've got income of $36,000. That means their savings burn rate is $48,000 a year. Assuming that they're not going to sell their house, that they want to keep their house because they want to have something to go back to if the assisted living screws up, right? That, that $300,000 is going to last them 6.25 years in assisted living facility. That's not insignificant, but that's number one. 